three, two, one. All right, I'm back on the podcast. Man, that 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 didn't sound right. I'm back on the podcast today. <laughs> <I'll come back. laughs> just whatever, right? Whatever. At some point, I don't even need to like worry about this because I've done so many of them uh, that the the percentage of times that I actually do make a mistake are so small that uh, you know, like even the best hitters in the world, baseball players in the world, struck out a lot of times. Oh yeah, right. So I just struck out there. But now there's another at bat. It's happening right now. Today on the No Four Play series, I'm talking once again with Jeremy Dinsmore of the Antler Up podcast. And today we're going to be talking about how weather impacts deer movement. And I'm just going to kick it to you. And I'm going to say, what are your thoughts, man? I, I'm with it. I'm all about it, especially when it's rain some sort of precipitation mm -hmm. i know the the big thing the big law of of uh the big lore of of coldness and and weather drops and barometric pressure but man my favorite dan has got to be when there's some sort of precipitation where i could be out in the woods and it times up perfectly where it stops mm -hmm. and i'm already in the woods at some point in time or if there's some random shower that comes through and i'm already out there and then it picks back up because just if i could just go off of even this year i would be i would be a believer just one yeah. year but over year after year after year it just seems like a good rain or just even a nice little light drizzle some sort of of rain precipitation your movement just skyrockets yeah i'll even say that in warm temps and there's rain mm -hmm. right early season october it could be 75 degrees outside and it starts to rain like i always look at it like this what is the hierarchy of weather that's going to get deer to move right right and it always revolves around rain or massive amounts of snow right Correct. so did you just have a massive snowstorm in michigan uh, well pennsylvania um oh, pennsylvania i'm sorry yeah nope, nope. um we we had a little couple inches and we saw some really good deer movement some of my cameras that i still had uh out on cell camera or whatever I, I was still getting some some good movement and kind of had them in transition areas too that's where mm -hmm. i like to place my cameras so they were definitely moving trying to find food and and locating that type of stuff but yeah i'm, I'm with you any type of snow rain that is kind of what i really really look forward to okay so let's kind of break this down a little bit and let's let's talk about early season yep rain and usually i'm not saying every time but usually rain means some kind of cold front is coming through the midwest okay now there's times where it doesn't and it actually the 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 pressure system moves up from the south and the rain comes with higher higher temperatures right okay so i'll just kick off what I, what I've, what I've seen over the years. Right. And so anytime there is an extended period of rain, I'm, and I, when I say extended period, I don't mean just a, an afternoon shower. I mean a day where it soaks all day potential. So I'm, I'm going to say over 18, over 24 hours of constant rain. I have seen deer movement drastic a drastic uptick in deer movement after that long rainstorm on the flip side when it comes to cold fronts i have also seen cold fronts with precipitation equal uh in an increase in deer movement but you take the precipitation out and it's just a dip in temperatures in the early season i don't think that the impact is near as great as it is with a rain event right what, what have you seen i've seen that same thing and the kind of since the last statement that you said like with that early season and and mm -hmm. dip in temperature when i do see if there's no precipitation is that mid to end of october that's when mm -hmm. i'll see a little bit and i think too there's more biological things going on and on with a deer and then just saying it's cold and let's get up and move type of ordeal but i agree a hundred percent because in september i was out in maryland this year hunting and it was a hundred degrees on friday of opening day on mm -hmm. saturday 
it was low 90s but there was a storm came through dan and it was when i say a storm it was a storm like we had to go for cover mm -hmm. um while we were out out in the woods and the temperature did drop right it did come with that temperature drop you know high 70s uh low 80s type of ordeal so it dropped 10 12 degrees man right after that that is when i had that 10 point come in kind of snuck in on me opposite direction and all that stuff and that was the second day of the season that is september 90 80 degree temperatures right yeah and and then october 7th or whatever that that saturday was here in pennsylvania it called for rain that friday before and then the next morning obviously i was going out hunting and it said it was supposed to stop i don't know 6 30 a.m but it kept going and it mm -hmm. rained until about 8 8 30 boom as soon as it stopped raining deer were up moving i killed the doe that like right away right after that i mean they it just they just appear it's just it's, yeah. it's fascinating to see that uh and just again that's just going off of this year with success already of seeing deer movement along those lines and i agree with you too when there's a full 18 to 24 hours of rain continuous rain man if if that next day uh falls with a little bit of a temperature drop but again if you're if you are able to time it where okay it's not a monsoon right now, but I could still, I could still stay somewhat dry, or my I, my gear could hold up to to what it's doing and be in the woods. Because by that point in time, I'm telling you, they just they just start moving. Right. So sometimes I even have to check myself, right? Because I'm not in the the real world anymore when it comes to hunting. I can go hunt on a Tuesday afternoon or a Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. stay all day if i want to just because that's the life i live now you have a full-time job everybody who listens to this more than likely has a, a full-time job whether they're nine to five or they're on some kind of shift work is it worth taking vacation days early season taking away from the rut your rut vacation and shifting one of those days into the early season I think it can if you've done your homework. I mean, I, that, that, I think- Elaborate you, on that. Elaborate yeah, so, on that. So what I mean by your homework, I, I'm talking, you know, where like this year, I really honed in on food, like with a, the acorn drop. And that's where yeah. I was very successful this year. So I did my homework with that. And that's where put me in that position with the rain situation of like, okay, I think deer will be feeding in, the, in this area because of the homework that I did. So I think take- you don't even need trail cameras yes that would be a plus that maybe might help you by checking them i'm like okay deer are here but if you've done homework and you know deer are living in that vicinity and moving throughout there checking it and you line it up with a rain and you're like man it could be a potentially good day like it's dropping a little bit eight to twelve degrees with this storm and i can time it, it I, you know if you're able to maybe get out of work a little bit earlier or you're okay with doing that because it's a it might be a good deer that you're after. I think you can. I, I really, really do. Again, what I've learned over the years is I, I got burned by those major cold front drops. I just felt like to me, they never lived up to the hype. And I know I, maybe I'm in the wrong spots, right? Maybe I didn't do the, I was just in the, the quote unquote, the right homework per se, yeah. but man, it just always seemed like it'd be October 14th or 16th. And it's like, here it comes. There, there's that 15 to 20 degree drop. I would take off school. I would drive two and a half hours to Northeast Pennsylvania. And I wouldn't see crap. You know what yeah. I mean? And that's a, not a highly pressured area and spot that I would hunt. So you would think like I, my percentage would be a little bit up of even seeing a young buck or something and yeah. nothing, Dan. So I've, I've learned to, okay, if, the, the the key ingredient to all that stuff that will help that will push me over the edge to possibly take that day off is that precipitation yeah. along with doing a little bit of that homework yeah and i made a, a couple comments about this uh this october we talked I, about it too yeah yeah we, we talked, we talked about, about it i put a poll out on my instagram and now it's not like tens of thousands of people but it's a decent reflection i feel of what a man, I wonder if I have it on this piece of paper. No, I didn't write it down, but um, here, here's what I, uh, here's what I asked, and it is 
this last cold front, it landed on a weekend this past October, right? So therefore more people were able to hunt, hunt it, right? And so here's what I asked. I asked, um, did you hunt this cold front? 70% of the people who responded said, yes, they did. Did you have deer within shooting range? Check this out. 30% of people said that they had deer within shooting range. Of the deer, of the deer, of that number, of that 30%, did you have a mature buck within shooting range? Of that 30%, only 20% said that they had a mature buck within shooting range, right? And so, um, and then I have another one here, but I just have the percentages down. Uh, oh, here was the last question. If this cold front landed on a weekday, would you have taken vacation to hunt it? 80% of people said no. Right. So what's that tell you? And I know this is a very small scale uh, poll, but it tells you that the hype around cold fronts, it could be as much hype as you want, but the average Joe is not that concerned about it given the fact that they have the entire rut in front of them right exactly so that's kind of cool man I, I i like that i like those statistics right i agree with you i because when you think about it when it starts getting to the 20th of october no matter what if you're a diehard whitetail hunt whitetail hunter you're listening to this podcast man you're you're fiending to get out right yeah. or you're doing everything possible especially on those weekends right. and if a cold front lines up on those weekends that's all great and dandy but regardless you're still going to be going out no matter what right like yeah. that was i mean it just that's just the nature of the beast it, it, sometimes you just say hey these are the vacation days i'm taking that because that's when i could take it or that's you know you, you just have you're going to be going out certain times of the year uh, but yeah those early like kind of the re track a little bit of early early season if you're hunting september early october those first week like week and a half in october if you are again on on your game as far as scouting and understanding deer movement in a particular spot and it lines up again with mainly a rain precipitation i think it it really bodes well for you to get in there at least give it a shot because right i mean a good friend of mine a couple of years ago when we hunted together we we timed up a rain we're like okay let's get in there while it's still raining and we went to different spots i saw a couple deer movement young young bucks a couple doe he had a, a good buck come up over a crest he shot he hit it we he didn't recover that buck that year but again it was just like you, you just started seeing more and more about how rain really affects deer deer movement and uh, that is one of the key things that i love to to look at yeah and so i will say that as we start getting here here's where i get fired up about a cold front coming through and it is i will only get excited about an early season cold front if i have trail camera data of a nocturnal buck coming close yeah. to evening shooting light right? Let's say he's, he's coming through 30 minutes past dark or an hour past dark. I will go and hunt that cold front. If I have consistent data from a trail camera, mm -hmm. then I know, Hey, if I get in here, if I ease in here, I'm going to, I might have a shot at this buck tonight, right. but in some way, shape or form, it's still kind of risky because if that he's not impacted by that cold front and you don't see him, but you're getting down and then he busts you, at the bottom of the tree or he catches a big whiff of you it could throw his pattern off yeah for at least a you know a couple days to a week I, I would assume right those those ones like how you said about the evenings the ones that i find troubling are those morning sits like that just because like if it's man it's going to be cold tomorrow mm -hmm. morning and then it heats up or something along those lines and like you said daylighting like i had i had a camera this past year that it's been sitting in the same spot for two years and man early season sometimes it is like clockwork they are just right there right on the cusp of shooting light and it's like man like do, you, do i try but the wind and the access is very tough sometimes to get in there and, and to hunt that in the morning uh it's like one of those 
do you, do I just finally just say, screw, ah, screw it and just go give it a shot and just see what happens. And, yep. um, but you know, I didn't get a chance to do that this year. It was definitely on the verge of, it, it could, I could do it, but, uh, it's, that's the troubling part is like, when, when do you try that? Because like I said, it in the morning, I had a couple of deer where they were right there on the cusp of, of, um, uh, you know, first shooting light and yeah. I just didn't pull the trigger. Yeah. We're going to have to break this, uh, this <laughs> conversation in, into two different episodes because I want to, cause I feel like there's a whole nother conversation about the rut in late season that, mm -hmm. that need to be addressed. But as far as early season is concerned, is there a date range that you would say like early season movement? Cause, because why do we call it early season? We call it right. early season because the deer are not as active, mm -hmm. you know, like once the, once we start getting into the pre-rut, cause it goes early season, then pre-rut. And if you are the type of person who believes in a lull, I do not believe in lulls. No. Um, and so then it goes from pre-rut to rut, right? What is the time frame around where you, uh, where you hunt, where the deer start to pick up movement to the point of a, uh, a cold front not or being more attractive because it's closer to the pre rut rut time frame i would say from october 18th on anything okay. 18th on is is where i'll start to get a little bit more giddy focusing on what my uh weather underground is really saying checking right. like those two type of things because like early season on from that i might be like that first weekend is when I, I could be like what I was just talking about as far as a deer being close. And if there's that cold front, like this year, we, that's what we had. We had that first, when I killed that, that doe, like I said, um, it, it was that cold front. It landed on that first opening weekend with rain. And that's where I was like, Oh man, I'm going to go to a spot where I had a ton of scrape action of, uh, in postseason scouting. And I found acorns. There it was like dear God to be moving through there. So it's either going to be yeah. a doe or a buck type of sit, but um, yeah, the 18th on to answer your question, Dan, the 18th on is when I get really excited and kind of start shifting my focus where it's, you know, bucks, uh, will be moving and checking things. Yeah. And I'll say this, if I don't want to say if you're a field edge hunter, because sometimes the only access you have is a field edge, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm lucky enough to have multiple farms with multiple environments, you know, to, to have a true staging area, to have a true bedding area and deer just aren't working. Like they're living on the farms that I hunt and they're moving around on the farms that are hunt. They're just not cutting through a corner or like a real small acres. I'm, I'm lucky with like that. Right. But I will say that early season cold fronts, I don't care how much the temperature drops. You won't find me on a field edge. You, yep. I mean, I'm going to be in some kind of transition. I'm going to be in some kind of pinch or terrain feature that uh, either funnels deer movement or puts them on a ridge on that military crest that everybody talks about. And so, but, you know, I'm not hunting field edges at all, really. Right. This last year I did just because the layout of the farm dictated it. It's not necessarily a field edge farm. Mm -hmm. but it's the pinch point is a little wide. There's a part of it that's wide open and the deer just funnel through that all the time. So, so, you know, then I'll hunt a field edge, but I'm not, I'm not going to hunt field edges in any type of weather event. Usually it's all going to be back into the timber. And I think with a, uh, a weather event, whether mm -hmm. it's rain or snow in the month of October, then your access becomes easier and it's going to allow you to get into some of these spots closer to deer movement to take advantage of the potential of a cold front impacting deer movement. Right. If that makes any sense at all. It does. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. So as we, uh, you know, we're going to have to do a, a part one, two, and three. This was yep. really an early season conversation. Next, let's talk about Im weather impacts during the the, the pre-rut and rut time frame and then we'll even do a third one where we'll talk about late season weather and things like that so uh in closing do you have anything else to say about early season cold fronts or how weather 
I, I tell you what we what we did forget to talk about was heat. Mm. Extreme yeah. heat. What are your thoughts and how do you play the extreme heat temperatures, the 80s, 90s, the Indian summer type? Uh, yeah. Um, I think for, like I said, mentioned earlier, like when I went to Maryland, it was just like, listen, I'm here. I got a hunt type of ordeal. Mm -hmm. um, deer are used to it. Just get into those where it could be the coolest little pockets, you know, swampy area type of ordeal. Uh, not fun for us humans, but if somewhere where the deer feel most comfortable, most safe and cool and got, have that shade, that's where I kind of focused in on and saw some deer and, and saw some sign, but you know, it was, Maryland was a little bit different from where, when I hunted, but here in Pennsylvania, when it's super hot, um, you know, Dan, like honestly, just because of, of being a teacher and having that full-time job, I hunt when I can hunt and I just got to yeah. deal with it and just try to find those little pockets where it could be the cool. And if that means go down to finding the hemlocks, going down to these creek bottoms, stuff like that. And it, it's a more challenging type of hunt because of the wind, the way it swirls a little bit. But at that point in time, those are the days where I don't really key in on my good main spots. It's I might be scouting in a little bit more, finding little pieces of the puzzle of where I could go postseason or a potential rut hunt type of ordeal. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of like what I do when it gets to that extreme heat type stuff. I just try to find those creek bottoms, hemlocks, uh, places like that where those deer really want to go to. Yeah. I, I honestly, man, I just don't hunt. Yeah. I go find, so, yeah. I go find something <laughs> else to do. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I got the fall is really busy anyway with kids sports and things like that. And it really doesn't slow down till the pre rut time frame anyway. So any type of extreme heat now, again, I, I say that with an asterisk because any time I have a patternable deer, mm -hmm. right? Something that's on trail camera consistently, I'm going after it. I don't care if it's 85 degrees negative right. 85 degrees i don't care if it's early season i don't care if it's late season rut pre-rut don't care if it's patterned yeah the weather shouldn't be a, a factor in your decision making it right. should be i have a deer that's patterned i need to go and figure out what the wind is what the wind direction is going to be and then from there uh, uh figure an access route into where this deer is coming from i love that whether yeah. whether uh, and, uh, weather shouldn't play a role in that. So, right. I like, anyway, that. um, yeah, dude, I will say this though, you know, we, we talk about these Trump cards all the time about, you know, <laughs> Hey, what Trump's what, as far as deer movement is concerned, the rut Trump's deer movement, breeding season, Trump's weather yeah, like, time oh, of yeah. year, Trump's weather. One of the largest bucks I've ever seen in my life, eight pointer. No, no joke. He's probably a six, seven year old, eight pointer, 170 clean eight. I got footage of him. He is ridiculously huge. It was 80 degrees, November 5th. I want to say 2012 or 13 mm -hmm. or something like that. Just cruising three yep. o'clock in the, three o'clock in the afternoon, just cruising a ridge system. And his <laughs> yep. tongue was out. He, like I was in a t-shirt, you know, I just set up this running gun stand dripping wet and here he comes. So weather's yeah. important, but time of year, I feel like is more important. I'm with you a thousand percent on that. I know, you know, the last couple of years, depending on where you're at across the, you know, the globe right now within the United States with where you are for the rut. But I'll tell you what, deer are going to still do what deer do. I mean, right. it could be. Uh, yeah, it might be people are saying, oh, rut activity is only at night and I'm not seeing it during the day and blah, 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 blah. Well, they got to be somewhere during the day moving. Right. I, I mean, he's not just going to be like, okay, I'm waiting until that sun goes down to go try to find something. Right. Right. Well, and uh, you know, us Northerners here, we are talking about heat and there's guys in the South that are just laughing at us right now. Like, you have no idea. Like I was, I've been hearing stories about guys like, just, so we have to deal with a little bit of thorns, right? Mm -hmm. Just, just a couple thorns walk into our stands hot. Maybe, maybe depending on if you're around water, we might have to mess around with some mosquitoes. And then I hear these stories about guys from Mississippi, Louisiana, Florida, talking about what they have to go through if they want to hunt in October. 
And I'm just like, uh, no, thank no, you. Thanks. I know. I know. <laughs> I'll, buddy, I'll just he, wait. I'll just yeah. wait. Yeah. My so, buddy, Bobby, when he, when he'll, he'll send me a video of like in the middle of the, uh, walk into a location and he's like, there's a gator. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like, no, thanks. Yeah. No, thanks. No, thanks. No. All right. And rattlesnakes too. Yeah. Snakes. Woo. Yeah. You don't have to worry about that in Iowa. All right, Jeremy, really appreciate you taking time out of your day to do this. And uh, I guess we'll talk to you next week, man. Awesome. Thanks, Dan.